Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so I, I actually deleted the public class and then the, the main method just so we can get used to writing it sometimes, right? So as you can see, I have this file saved as learnjava.java, learn right? And so let's just do it, right? If I if I undo it, you actually you actually see it, you actually see the class and then the main method. But then let's um, redo it, and and basically create it from create it just so we get used to it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a public class, and remember we said that the class has to be the same as the name of the file. So public class learn Java, right? Without the extension, just the name of the of the, of the file. Okay, it has to be the same as the name of the file. And then we said the class serves as a container for your program. And so I have a, the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace. And then we create our main method, right? So public static void main. And we talked about a main method, or basically a method. Well, first of all, let me just fill this up. We didn't talk too much about the method header, or basically what goes on in here, right? We didn't say, but we'll talk about it when we get to methods. But we said that a method is basically a series of code that we're going to type in here, right, in, in, in the method body. Okay, that is basically wrapped up, wrapped up together with curly braces, right? So opening curly brace and closing curly brace. So that's simply wrapped up, okay, together with curly braces and given a name. In this case, the name is main. And to basically, basically once we call this method by its name, it does whatever lines of code we wrote in the body. And so we talked about this more, you know, in the parts of a Java program and other programs, right? And other videos. But we'll talk more about methods once we get to methods, right? So, but this is basically the basic structure. So if you're not sure, please I'll go back to the first few videos. Um, there's one called the parts of a Java program and the, di the different parts of a Java program and you'd, you'd have an idea of what it is. All right, so in this video, I wanted to talk about integer division, right? And so, Let's create a variable, a double variable, right? And let's call it um, answer, right? And answer, I'm going to set it equal to, well, before that, let, let's just declare it. And then let's just, you know what? Let, I'm going to set answer to, well, to be equal to 2.6. And let's print out the value of, sorry, my typing is bad the value of answer, right? And we should expect 2.6 to be displayed. So when I compile this and I run it, we can see 2.6. Now let's do some calculation here. Let's divide, let's say, um, let's divide, let's say, 2.5, right? Remember we said the division. We use a forward slash, so 2.5 divided by 2.5, right? If I compile this and I run it, we get 1.0, right? Okay, let's try 5.0 divided by 2.5. We can actually pull up a calculator here. Let's do the same thing here. So five, just to cross check. So 5.0 divided by 2.5, it gives us two, right? So we should expect 2.0 here, basically as a, as a double variable, as a double variable. Well, value, All right? So compile this, and then run it. We get 2.0, which is correct. It's basically displaying 2.0 because the the the, the answer is, is actually um, a double. The answer answer is actually declared as a double, so it's displaying it as a decimal, or as a double value. All right. So now let's try something else. Let's try five divided by two. Now before we display the answer. Let's check it on our calculator just to see what happens. So 5 divided by 2, right, gives us 2.5, right? 2.5. And we know that 2.5 can be stored in answer because answer is declared as a double. So we shouldn't have any problem. And so we should expect 2.5 here. Now let's try it out. So let me bring this up a little bit. Compile this, compile well, run it, and we get 2.0. Hmm. All right. Let's try something else. We should. Get, we were supposed to get 2.5, but we got 2.0. Let's try something else. Let's try 10 divided by, um, let's see, uh, 10 divided by 3, right? Let's try it on our calculator. 10 divided by 3. We get 3.33333. Okay, good. 
So we know that's what we should expect here, right? So let's compile this and then run it. We get only 3.0. Now, what's happening? There's something going on here, which is called integer division. Now, let's go back to, I'm going to undo, let's go back to 5 divided by 2. Now, 5 divided by 2, when we typed it here, we got 2.5, right? So we should, we're expecting the same thing here. If we compile this and we run, we are getting just 2.0. What's, what's happening? So what's happening is there's something going on here which is called integer division. Now because this operand, right, because this five, this 5 here, this operand and this operand are both integers. When you, when you look at them, they're actually integers. Because they're both integers, in the in actual sense, when you divide 5 by 2, you're supposed to get 2.5, right? But because these two both operands are integers, what is going to happen is Java is going to take only, it's going to first of all consider this division as, as an integer division because both operands are integers. And so what happens with integer, integer division is it takes the, the only the integer part of the answer and drops the fractional part away. So basically it takes only the integer part of the answer and then ignores anything after the decimal point. And so that's why instead of having this value or this answer as 2.5, we get 2.0 because it's considering this division as two, uh, sorry, as an integer division. And when, and, and the reason why it's considering, considering this division as an integer division is because both operands are integers, right? But this is wrong, right? We've declared answer as a double va va variable. We should, it should, it should supposed to, uh, sorry, sorry, it's, it's supposed to basically store 2.5 in answer, but it's not doing that because it's considering this as an integer division. So how do you fix it, right? The way you fix it is this. One of, at least one of these operands has to be a double, right? That's, that's the only way you can get a double var value out of this. At least one of them. If both of them are integers, if both operands are, sorry, if both of these operands are doubles, right? It doesn't matter. The thing is, at least one of them, at least one of the operands has to be a double. If both operands are doubles, that's fine. All it, all it requires is that at least one of them has to be a double. And so I'm going to change this five from an integer, right, to a double 5.0, right? A double, basically a decimal five is an integer, but 5.0 is a decimal, right? Now, because at least one of the operands here right it doesn't matter which one it can be the five it can be the two one of them has has to be a double for this result to really give you 2.5 and so because one of them is a double now this is is not not considered considered as an integer division anyway any longer because both operands are not integers only one of them is for for it for this to be considered a regular division let's say a regular decimal division one of them has to be a double okay and then this wouldn't be considered an, an integer division so when I compile this and I run this now we should expect now 2.5 that's because at least one of them is a double but it, but as long as both operands are integers this is considered as an integer division right and what happens is because they're considered as an int integer division 5 divided by 2 right on our, on our calculator it gives us sorry on our calculator it gives us 2.5 but over here both operands are integers so this is considered as an int int integer division and what happens with it with an integer division is that only the integer part of this answer is kept and anything after the decimal point is just wiped away and so we only get two so when we compile this we get 2.0 the only way we can get a, a, the correct answer from this is that one of them at least one of them if both of them are Double, doubles, that's fine. But at least one of them has to be a double. So the first time we change this to 5.0, this time around let's change 2, two from two, 2 to basically 2.0. Now at least one of them is a double. And so this is going to result in 2.5. When we compile this and we run it, we can see it's 2.5. Now the other example we tried was 10 divided by 3. And when you type in 10 divided by 3 in our calculator over here, we get 3.3333, right? But over here, it's a problem because both operands are integers. And so even though we're supposed to get this, this is considered as an integer division because both operands are integers. And so only the integer part of this answer is kept. And anything after the decimal point is just thrown, thrown away. 
So instead of us seeing 3.333, we see only the integer parts of this answer, which is just 3. And so when we compile this and we run it, we see 3. For us to get 3.33 in the correct answer, at least one of these has to be a double, right? It, it can be both of them. Let's first change the 10 to a double as 10.0. Now one of them, at least one of them is a double. Compile this and run it. And we can see 3.3333. Well, this is the answer, right? We can also, let's take it back to, to basically an integer division. We get 3 back. Let's change 3, three rather to a double, right? At least one of them has to be a double. And so now we see 3.33. Okay, let's take this back to where, where it was, when it was three, uh, 10 divided by 3. Now this is in, in this is basically integer division, so we're supposed to get three. Right now, let's make both of them doubles. Compile this and run, and we're supposed to get three point three three. Now the thing is, at least one of them has to be a double. If both of them are doubles, that's fine. All it requires is at least one of them has to be a double for us to get the the real decimal answer. But if we stick with integers, if both operands are integers. If the answer is supposed to have a fractional part, like let's say 3.333, only the integer part of that answer will be displayed or will be stored in answer. And the fractional part will be thrown away. And so this is, this is a very important concept because when you're writing your programs with lots of math you be, you, you may, and, and you don't get this right, you may ha end up having errors. You may end up getting, getting so many errors and you, your answers will be incorrect. Imagine you're dealing with a program that has or is calculating monetary values and money um, amounts. If you make a mistake, then your program is, you know, you're basically screwed. That's very bad. And so this is an important con concept, which we'll see more of. This is for you to just be introduced to and understand what's going on. But we'll see more of, um, and you, you, you'll understand it um, even better, right? But um, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then, bye-bye.